Hi, I'm Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics. Today I'm going to show you how to make a pattern called roundabout. Now this pattern takes layer cakes. So if you're going to make the throw size, you need one layer cake. The queen size takes two. And then we need a little bit of background, some binding. And I really like the colors that are used in this pattern, but summer's coming and it's getting kind of warm. And I'm thinking I would like something a little bit cooler. So look at these batiks here. They're called Summer Zest. They have kind of a citrusy flair to them. So that's what I'm going to use. I'm going to use these for all the patchwork and then I'm going to use a nice solid white for the background. Now the pattern has you split your layer cake squares into three stacks and one of the stacks is going to be for these stars. So you want to pick the colors you are going to want to use for your stars. I think I'm going to use darker fabrics for my stars. So I'm going to pull those off first. There's the fabrics for the stars. Now these other two stacks, it doesn't really matter if you use darks or lights, you can mix them all up because they're going to be used in these parts here. Now this is a pattern by Doug Lecco from Antler Quilt Designs, and I can't give you all the cutting sizes, but his patterns are very easy to follow. So just cut along with exactly what it says and we'll have all the pieces we need to start sewing. We need two and a quarter yards of background, and this is going to get cut up into a variety of sizes. Okay, now we've got all our pieces and we're ready to start sewing. The first thing we're gonna work on is the little teeny star block. So that's this part right here. So I've pulled off all the pieces I need. I need eight squares there, four rectangles, four square corners, and the center. So to what we're gonna do is we're gonna mark the back of these squares here. I like to mark the back with a pencil. If you have dark, real dark fabric, you might need to use a chalk pencil, but I'm just gonna make a light line from corner to corner. Now this first block here is going to go on the rectangle. It fits exactly on there, and we're going to stitch right along the drawn line. Now, if you don't want to draw all your lines, these blocks here are actually small enough so you can lay it on top and you can just stitch from this corner toward the other corner without drawing because it's pretty small. Just aim towards the far corner. Of course, if you're not comfortable doing that, go ahead and draw the lines, but either method will work really well. Now, each one of these squares is going to get ironed toward the corner. So when you fold it, you'll see that your raw edges will meet up. We'll give it just a little bit of steam here. Then we're going to trim off those back two layers. And on something small like this, I just like to use my scissors, but you can rotary cut it if you like. So I'm just gonna leave a quarter inch seam allowance there. Now we're going to do the exact same thing on the opposite corner. So line everything up and we're gonna stitch right along here. Again, draw a line if you need. I'm not going to, I'm just going to aim for the far corner. Now we can lay out the star block here. So these go on the four sides and then these plain white ones go in the corners. So I'm going to sew these two together and leave them on the machine. Then I'm going to pick these ones up, stitch along here and leave it on the machine. And then the last two. Now I'm just going to add the third piece to each one of the rows here. Now we're gonna finger press our seams. So this 
the top row here, the seams are going to go away from the center. And in the middle, they're going to go toward the center. So all I'm doing is opening up the seam and then drawing my fingernail down that seam to flatten it out a little bit. Again, these ones go away from the center. Now, to sew our rows together, all of our seam allowances will be nesting. They'll be going in different directions and it's real easy to match them up. There's the first star. So we need to make a total of eight of these stars. Now those are all done. The next block we're going to make uses these small squares and some of these big squares. So this is a similar method. We're going to take a big square and a little square and we're going to sew it just like we did with the flying geese corners. We're going to go right along the diagonal. And again, I'm not going to mark it. I'm just going to stitch. But these big squares, they are only going to get one corner. So all we have to do is sew that on to all of these. So we're just going to iron this part over and then we're going to trim away the excess here. So the second blocks are done. Now for the third one we need the plain squares and the printed squares. So we're just going to make some simple four patch blocks. So we're going to take two planes and two prints and get two different prints so that the block will look colorful. And we're just going to sew these together. And I like to keep that on the machine and then stitch the second pair. And we're going to finger press the seams toward the darker color. So that one's going to go towards the green. This one's going to go towards the orange. And now we're going to stitch this last seam here. I've got all of those blocks done, and I forgot to say, we've got a bunch of these and a few of these that are made with three whites and one print. But just be sure to follow the pattern. It will tell you how many you need of each kind of the block. Now we have all the parts ready to make the whole quilt. And normally at this point, I would lay everything out on my big table, sew it into rows, and sew the rows together. But this pattern is actually a lot easier if you make it in sections. And the instructions include nice diagrams that show you how to make each one of those sections. The first section we're going to work on is these corner units. So we're going to take one of the little stars that we made, and it's going to be surrounded by these colorful pieces here. So they're just going to go all the way around the edge, and I'm just going to get different colors. I'm not really going to worry too much about which color is going where. And then we've got plain squares in the corners. The easiest way to do this is to take these pairs and stitch them all together first. I'm just finger pressing all of these. I'm not going to take them to the ironing board yet. Now, all we have to do is sew the rows and sew the rows together. These are all finished up, and these are going to go in the four corners of the quilt. I know they're going to be farther apart, but the next thing we're going to work on is the units that are going to go right next to these. So we're going to make eight of those units. So that's what this section looks like. So all I'm going to do to sew it together is sew these four into a big block and then sew that onto it. Then I'll make this row and this row and simply sew the rows together. Now these eight will go right up against those corner blocks. So the big white corner is going to go next to it. There. Now, the next section we're going to work on is some blocks that are going to go in these blank areas here and in these inside corners. And this is what those blocks are going to look like. They're almost identical, except for this block here. It's turned this way in four of the blocks and this way in four of the blocks. So these are going to go here on the side in this corner 
and then the blocks that were made the opposite way are going to go all around here. So now we're starting to see a little bit of the structure coming out of the quilt. And the next unit that we're going to make is going to be a fill-in one for these spots right here. This section is pretty easy to make. It may seem like there's a lot of different parts and pieces for this quilt, and that's what I thought when I first looked at the pattern, but it's really very easy to make because we're just using the same pieces over and over. And it's kind of fun to see the whole quilt build from these separate sections that we're making. So these fit right in here. And now you can see there's a little area here that needs something. And so I've got the row laid out right here. So we need to make four of those. So this piece fits right in there. One for this side, one for this side, and then one that's gonna go on the far side here. And now all we have is the very center and that's gonna be done all in one big section. That's the whole center section and it's pretty easy to sew together. I'll sew these two pieces together and these two, and then I can make this big wide row. Then I've got a skinny row, another wide row, a skinny row, a wide row, and then I'll sew all the rows together. There, now all I have to do is sew it into rows, sew the rows together, add a couple of borders, and get it onto the quilting machine. Now that I have the quilt on the machine and I can see the pattern, I know I'm gonna to wanna to use a very pale color of thread when I quilt because I don't really want anything, any of the pattern showing up in these white areas. So any of these will work. They will barely show there. Even this bright yellow one, it's not gonna show up much but it's gonna blend in very well everywhere else. Pale yellow, even pale peach will work, but I think this bright yellow will work the best. For the quilting pattern, I'm going to use one called Merrily. It has a little leaf, it has some flowers, it's very cheerful, and that will match our cheerful quilt. so happy with how the quilt came out. It's just a cheerful, happy quilt. I like the borders. I like everything about it. I, even, I like the back. So this is another batik with big sunflowers, another summery print. You can't see the quilting very much because it blends in really well. And on the front, the quilting really recedes, which is great because I want to see all that nice, bright patchwork. Now it's 63 by 87, so it's a twin size, and the pattern also has instructions for making a queen size, which just has more patchwork all the way around. Now, even though there were a lot of steps, they were all simple steps, and they were all made by repeating these same units over and over to make a really nice pattern. Thanks for watching our tutorial on how to make the roundabout quilt. We hope you enjoyed it. Now, we are gonna have another giveaway this is the pointy strip star. It's a nice big quilt. We did a video on how to make this, a lot of fun. But today you can win this. It's all made with ombre metallic fabrics, nice orange bright grunge on the back side. So all you have to do to enter is click the link below that says giveaway and put in your email address and your name and you might be the next lucky winner. Now, if you like our tutorials and you want to support us, the best thing you can do is subscribe to our YouTube channel.
that would really help us out. Happy quilting!